what happened to Elita West. Why is she so important to y'all? Hello, welcome back to another episode. Watch out, spoilers ahead. Explore the peripherals, timelines, futures, and impending apocalypse. Based on William Gibson's 2014 book, The Peripheral stars Chloe Grace Mortz as a star gamer who discovers something far greater while testing prototype VR technology. The Peripheral is a sci-fi experience with secrets, mysteries, and reality-bending head-scratchers. The Peripheral's first two episodes alternate between the 2030s and 2000s. The Peripheral explores a connection between the two eras. Episodes 1 and 2 leave enough breadcrumbs for audiences to start figuring out what's going on between eyeball removal and backseat makeout sessions. The Peripheral's 2032 timeline explained. The Peripheral episodes 1 and 2 are set 10 years in the future in Clanton County. In 2032, VR simulations are big business, and wealthy players hire ex-military personnel like Jack Rayner's Burton Fisher to help them navigate tricky levels. The peripheral episode 1's closing moments show Burton and his fellow soldiers with implants that link them to each other and connect their vision to drone cameras. Implants cause painful and debilitating side effects. Burton's younger sister, Flynn is a record-breaking post-level 100 gamer. Despite her sim skills, Flynn works at a 3D printing store, highlighting how common that industry is by the peripherals 2032. Illicit pharmaceuticals are the only other industry thriving in this timeline since legal drugs are too expensive for families like the Fishers. Unfortunately, dystopian developments continue. The peripheral alludes to 2032's deteriorating natural environment through the Brown River and Billy Cleanup. Ends, how Flynn is connecting to the future. Flynn, played by Chloe Grace Mortz, is immersed in a virtual reality simulator. Episode 2 reveals the truth. Her consciousness jumps 70 years into the future, but the bigger question is how a small-town girl from 2032 is roaming futuristic London. The peripheral reveals what's happening between timelines. In the peripherals 2100, quantum tunneling allows communication with the past, but this isn't time travel. Based on episodes 1 and 2 in William Gibson's novel, the future can only travel through the past technology and computers. In the case of the Fisher siblings, someone in 2100 noticed Burton's VR sim account, Easy Ice, had racked up big points and asked him to test a prototype VR headset. These headsets drop historical figures into robotic bodies like Westworld cyborg hosts. These robots are only available to wealthy people like Lev Zuboff who know how to handle and control them. How the peripherals two timelines are linked. Every sensation the robot feels is experienced in the past by its headset-wearing controller. Like in a video game, the peripherals robots are physically superior to their drivers. Burton performs gymnastics in Buckingham Palace, and Flynn uses kick-ass hit-girl-worthy martial arts moves. 2100's ability to communicate with the past has sinister uses beyond recruiting drone pilots. Even if they can only affect 2032 through technology, those in the future hold great power over history, especially since they already know what will happen. The peripheral suggests this problem is already starting. Burton's headset is from a fictional Colombian company called Milagros Cold Iron, a shell company for time travelers. If 22nd century London agents can set up companies, transfer funds, and know about past eras, their influence is hard to overstate. It's Biff Sports Almanac from Back to the Future 2, but darker. The peripheral's opening shows a miniature replica of the Fisher family's home, complete with a forest and figurines. Without the hand moving the figurines, viewers might think this is just an artistic way for the peripheral to switch timelines. This board is probably in the future and owned by the Research Institute, showing how well they know the past. The model may also explain how the assassins in the peripheral episode 1 know where to go and who to target. They're not time travelers. Like Burton and Flynn, they're 2032 residents hired by 2100 agents. High-tech cloaking equipment was likely sent to the killers via headset. The peripheral's future timeline explained. In 2100, the world, or at least London, has become obsessed with history, as shown by the opening shot of toy boats reenacting an ancient sea battle on a park lake and the massive, towering statues of historical figures dominating the landscape. The future in the peripheral looks bright and perfect, but Wilf Netherton and Alita think their world is past saving. The peripheral's future features classic sci-fi TV show architecture, technology, and more. However, nearly everything relies on nanobots. The Peripheral by William Gibson hints that much of the 2100 timeline is built from these nodules. Flynn enters Buckingham Palace, and a floor tile pattern reassembles into a robotic waiter. It means that this future is made up of assemblers, which are robots like the ones in Westworld, historical buildings, and maybe even huge statues. The Peripheral suggests the Research Institute is behind this dystopia. In Episode 1, they hire assassins to kill Flynn and Burton from an underground HQ in early 22nd century London. The Peripheral Episode 2 confirms that the Research Institute's technology allows those in 2100 to snoop in 2032 and that Alita has let others use it. The Milagros Cold Iron Group appears to be a resistance movement, but Lev Zubov makes it hard to trust them. 
what was the peripherals apocalyptic event. Alita hints that the peripherals future timeline isn't a natural progression from its past. Alita tells Easy Ice after their first mission that he'll likely be dead in a decade, signaling an apocalyptic event in 2042. In the peripherals novel, this was called the jackpot, and the cause was a myriad of factors that will feel frighteningly familiar in 2022. How bad can the jackpot be if 2100 looks so good? The peripherals' future may not be as bright thanks to nanobot tech. The assemblers could have built new structures over the decimated remains, so Episode 1's Buckingham Palace isn't the original. The peripheral only shows a futuristic London, leaving the rest of the world unknown. Stopping the peripheral's apocalypse is tricky. The peripheral's rules of time travel mean Milagro's Cold Iron and the Research Institute are creating separate timelines, or stubs. That would explain what Elita means when she tells Wilf, I'm saving the world. Preventing the past from succumbing to her dystopian future may reveal why Elita drags Flynn and Burton between timelines. She can at least create one history where the bad guys don't win. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.